Welcome to Around the Blockchain. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Awesome. All right, Greg, welcome to Around the Blockchain. If you can just introduce yourself briefly to the viewers for me. Hi. So my name is Greg and I run a restaurant called Third Wave Cafe in Melbourne. Uh, we are a slow smoked American barbecue meats restaurant and, and burgers. So the kind of meats that you can cut with a spoon, smoke for 12 to 16 hours, uh, really juicy, really tasty, uh, and lots of burgers and a few other things. Been around for 11 years. Wow. Sounds exactly like the sort of restaurant I, uh, I enjoy myself. So once, once obviously the travel restrictions have been lifted, I'll be heading to Melbourne, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. You're very, very welcome. Uh, we, we have um, lots of customers from all over Australia and certainly from all over the world as well. And uh, yeah, Melbourne knows as well. Yeah, absolutely. Melbourne's a, a great hub for um, restaurants and cafes and, and, you know, obviously fine dining and that sort of thing. So it's a great place to go and travel, especially if you're a, obviously an Australian. It's a good place to kind of go for a holiday. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. It, uh, uh, I think we have the best coffee in the world, but you know, I'm biased. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Talk to me a little bit about your, your background, um, Greg, and then I, I wouldn't mind obviously chatting about your NFT project as well, which is going to be quite interesting for the viewers. But yeah, if you can just talk to me a little bit about your, your background, I guess, where you grew up, um, and then obviously how you got into the um, restaurant business, and then obviously um, we can move through and talk about your NFT project as well. Yeah, okay, no worries. Um, so look, uh, uh, originally, uh, came from Russia about 35, 36 years ago when I was about 13. So spent most of my adult life uh, in, in Australia. So I'm not much more Aussie than, than Russian. Um, and really I've been running businesses all my life. So I've, I've been in, in spheres like uh, computer, wholesale, retail, um, digital marketing, uh, print, print advertising, uh, property development and hospitality. So the last 11 years have been spent in hospitality. Um, I got into it by accident, basically. My wife said she'd like a cafe. I said, okay, we should be able to uh, find enough customers not knowing anything about the business other than I've been to restaurants before. So I, you know, I've seen them from the customer side, um, got into that business, got a very rude shock about how that business operates. A very, very rude shock. Um, took, took me a while because I've been in businesses all my, all my life. So I have some idea about marketing, advertising, um, getting getting customers uh, to, to look up the customers. But um, how it all works in hospitality was a bit different to pretty much every other business I've been in. But we overcame it. We grew it. We, we, we made it work. We are still growing it. Um, and it's now been 11 years. So it's been a successful business. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds like you've got quite an extensive history in, you know, running uh, different businesses as well. Mm, yes, I've been, so that's, it's been, I've been running, running a business since I was, well, I was 14. So it's been, it's been 30 plus years uh, career if you start from when I was 14. Yeah, wow. Have you always obviously had that sort of, you know, entrepreneurial sort of blood and, and I guess that business sort of mindset? Yeah, basically, I think I only worked for someone twice in my life. Uh, once I, uh, when I was 13, delivering papers, and the other time when I was 18, just got my car and I was delivering uh, pizzas. So uh, either one of them, both of them lasted no more than three months. Um, I don't think I was fired from them, but I don't think uh, I, I thought it was a good idea for me to stay. Always run businesses. Yeah, it was a bit of a mutual decision then. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, look, I, I just, you know, when I was uh, delivering papers, getting $3.70 an hour just didn't appeal. Um, and uh, delivering pizzas, I think it wasn't much more than that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fantastic. And so the restaurant business, you've, you've obviously had that open, like you've just mentioned, for the last 11 years. And you've got uh, a pretty interesting and exciting sort of project um, that's just sort of developing um, your NFT project. Mm. Would you mind talk to me, talking to me a little bit about how you got into the crypto space um, first, and then we can chat about your project as well? Yeah, absolutely. So look, uh, being, uh, I've always been interested in technology. So um, I obviously, I, I got into crypto late. I got into crypto about midway through 2017. Seems to be uh, a year where a lot of people got into, got into crypto. Um, 
So I should have gotten into crypto in 2010 or 11 or 12, but that didn't happen. So, uh, so since 2017, you know, six months later, we got into a crash. So I got lots, lots of excitement during the first six months and then not so much for the next two to two, three years, but always kept in touch, always was interested in how it all progresses. And there's been a massive amount of progress since, uh, since then in the general, I call it crypto universe, because as far as I'm concerned, it's a different universe. To, to the normal world. Um, and obviously NFTs have come about and become more visible in the last, what, nine months, approximately, let's say, let's call it a year. Um, and after thinking about NFTs and understanding in my mind what they represent, um, I've decided that really NFTs, not that they are the future, they are the future, but they, they represent the migration of normal world into digital world. And that, to me, that's going to be the bridge. The bridge is going to be NFT. It's not going to be the cryptocurrencies or the crypto tokens. All of that will form a part and they will, form, they will have a function. But NFTs will ultimately, in my mind, represent what um, the world assets are in digital format. Okay. So after working that out for myself, I thought, all right, well, if that's the case, then there has to be something valuable we can offer our customers uh, or anybody within our community of influence from the business that we are operating. Uh, because we've always been on the forefront of marketing, marketing our business, and this is just an extension of that as far as we saw. So we started thinking about what is, what is the value proposition that we can offer, offer our customers through an NFT. Um, to us, effectively, an NFT is a digital token representing some, something, right? And in our case, it's representing the utility, the value that we're able to provide for our customer or for a holder of NFT who might not be a customer, but will get some value by holding our NFT anyway. So that's really how we arrived to, to this project. Um, and once we sort of got our heads around, all right, well, this is what we want to do. What sort of value can we offer? So we started putting together a value proposition that makes sense. And what makes sense to me always in anything that I do when it comes to marketing is give enough value to a customer that it's very hard to say no to. Okay. So as long as, as long as you give more than you get back in theory, the customer should say that makes sense. Let's, let's go with that. If you don't, then you start thinking, well, do I really need it? Will I get value out of it? All of that stuff goes through your, through your, through your mind. On the other hand, if you are absolutely clear that I'm going to get more, um, if I spend a dollar, I might get two. All right. Well, look, it doesn't make it very complicated to actually to actually do it. And that's really ultimately how we approach all marketing, and that's how we approach this particular NFT collection that we're putting together. Can you talk to me a little bit about the um, utility of your of your um, specific NFTs? Yeah, absolutely. So um, what we've done, we we've, we've thought about it, and we decided that effectively we have two groups of people who might be interested in our NFTs. One group are those people that are geographically close to our restaurant. So whether they live in Australia, whether they live in Melbourne, those people who can come to the restaurant um, often or, or continuously over a period, period of a number of years. Um, and uh, what we've done is for those people who've created um, enough utility that that be able to recoup the cost of the NFT literally within a few months. Uh, and that includes 30% discount on all food for themselves and other people that they bring with them. It includes a free um, menu special that we create every single month, monthly. So you can have 12 effectively free meals and these specials vary from $50 in value to $200 in value. And we're not limiting it. We're just saying you can get one free every month and they change every month. Um, you, you're also able to get uh, some merch, so t-shirts, a couple of free t-shirts, uh, you're, you're, you're getting um, invitations to exclusive events, and you're getting 30, 30 to 50% discount on, all, on, on those events. Uh, plus, you're getting distribution of restaurant profits. Uh, in 20% of the restaurant profits get distributed to the holders of this particular NFT tier, uh, tier collection, which is a platinum, platinum tier. So if you were to add up all of this stuff that I've just mentioned, um, you'll find that a regular user of our restaurant, a regular customer would be able to cover the cost of that NFT, which is $800 USD um, in three months or less. And then everything else is 
uh, not just bonus, but it's actually extra, right? So the free food, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's one. So that's for those people that can actually come to the restaurant and, and enjoy enjoy our food and enjoy our hospitality. The rest is a, a collection of a much cheaper NFT. It's only $150 USD. Um, and that, that one uh, is uh, possible to hold for those people that are not necessarily customers of the restaurant. So you do get a food credit. You get $500 worth of food credit um, when buying that NFT, which basically means that you actually get three times the value of the NFT in free food, right? But that's only if you can reach us. If you can't reach us, you also get 10% of restaurant profit distributed to you. You also get some merch and you also will get access to special events that we're going to set up in different parts of the world. So if you're close to that area, you'll be invited to participate. And those could include that we might do, uh, we might do a free dinner in New York on some, on some night um, and uh, we're going to, let's say, buy out a restaurant and we're gonna invite anybody who is around that area who holds an NFT to, to come and enjoy it on us. Okay, and we, we, we might do one of those a year. We might do another one in Los Angeles. We might do another one in London. We might do another one somewhere else in the world. So the idea is to build a, build a community of people who are associated with us, but don't necessarily need to come to us to enjoy benefits. Yeah, wow, sounds in extremely interesting. Um, I'm quite interested to hear how you're going to obviously distribute the profits or you know a percentage of the profits to your your um, NFT token holders. Is that also going to be based around um, distributing the profits via some kind of avenue in the crypto space? So will you will you pay them in cryptocurrency or will they also yeah, get? We will. Yeah. So we are we're actually in the process of setting up a DAO um, that is that is going to that is going to basically represent the the restaurant, um, and that DAO will give every NFT holder. Uh, some voting rights, and uh, it'll it effectively it'll give them uh, a, a stake in the DAO uh, for every NFT holder. And the uh, the profits are going to be distributed through the DAO in its token, but we will create a an exchange liquidity exchange pool where once the user or the holder of the NFT receives the token, they'll be able to, if they wish, convert it into a stable coin and do whatever they want with it. Withdraw it as cash, use it uh, as, as they like. So we we will buy, so the DAO ultimately will distribute the uh, restaurant income to the holders through its token, but also provide liquidity so that, that token can be exchanged into a stock. Wow, very interesting. I didn't realize you were going to be doing the uh, the DAO move as well. So, what blockchain are you guys building on then? What layer one are you are you deciding to build okay. on? So look, my my thinking is that uh, the most one of the most important things of holding an NFT is to provide um, as much opportunity to be able to sell it, right? So uh, unfortunately, NFT and NFTs are no, nowhere near as liquid as normal normal cryptos that you can you can exchange or trade through a DEX. So and right now, the best opportunity to trade an NFT today is OpenSea. Um, there might be others soon, I don't know, but today it's OpenSea and OpenSea allows only two chains effectively, ETH and Polygon, and ETH is too expensive. Therefore, we've gone with the Polygon route, so we're going to mint them on, on Poly. Um, the, the gas fees are almost non-existent for Poly, so therefore, even if you pay $150 for an NFT and if you trade it for the same, the gas fees are not going to at all affect your sell. Yeah, smart move. The gas fees on Ethereum obviously have been an issue for a long time. So putting on a subchain like Poly is, is probably a good move, I would say. Um, very interesting. So the DAO mechanism. Um, so is the entire ownership of the restaurant itself going to be placed into the DAO? Or is it just that 20% you were sort of initially talking about? The DAO is going to represent the entire profit of the restaurant. Okay, so uh, and therefore proportionally, uh, the the ownership of the restaurant that ownership of the DAO that is given to the NFT holders will represent the proportional profit that we uh, we are saying that they're going to get. Yeah, wow. Very interesting. What a great idea as well. Obviously, I, I've obviously been around the, um, the crypto space a little while. I actually entered it roughly probably the same time you did. My first purchase was in August of 2017. Mm -hmm. So roughly, yeah, around then. Yeah, that's, um, that, that's, that's when I bought Bitcoin for $3,000, I think. Or yeah. Something like that. Yes. Yeah, it wasn't very expensive at all. Um, and obviously, we probably both wish that we bought more. But anyway, <laughs> uh, 
Um, but this DAO sort of um, discussion continues to pop up in, in obviously the crypto space. And I think it's going to be an interesting, interesting one for the future as well. It seems like it's going to be quite a popular way to sort of structure, um, you know, different businesses and that sort of thing moving forward. I think you, uh, you're right. So I think this, this, um, um, this came out of a number of different conversations with various professionals, but um, it, it, is, it is a structuring mechanism as far as we're concerned. Just like in, in off crypto world, usually people use various structures to, to create a desired result, right? Uh, DAO is a structuring mechanism, but it's, a, it's probably a fairer structuring mechanism because it allows for lots and lots of input from all stakeholders. Um, whereas uh, in, in real life, the only time that happens is that the company is public and, and the shareholders have a shareholders meeting once a year and then they have something to say. Whereas with a DAO, um, uh, people, people can contribute at any time um, uh, and all the time, in fact, and it, it, will, it, will then, uh, it will then allow them to decide what, needs to, what, what could or should happen. And um, I think the, and, and really that, that, is, uh, that is an appropriate in our minds and our views um, an appropriate avenue for a global entity, because by by uh, introducing this NFT collection, we effectively, even though we're a local restaurant, we're becoming a global entity, and ultimately we're going to be responsible to the to the global ownership of this uh, of these NFTs. And is that sort of a goal of yours in the future? Obviously, I know that you you're based in Melbourne um, currently. Are you looking to you know potentially? Um, take this business model and, and you know replicate it um, you know you know domestically or even further um, internationally as well we, we haven't thought that far but I'll tell you what we have thought about um, so our, our main concern is always value 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 how can we give more value to, to our user base customer base it's the same it's, it's the same thing um, so what we started thinking about is all right once we sell out the collection right what do we then do? What's our roadmap to provide more and more value to, to our, our, uh, our NFT holders? Because the more value we provide to them, the more valuable the NFT is going to be. And the more valuable the NFT is going to be, the more value the, cust uh, the holders will get. Because we're not getting the value, we get some of it because we just, if, if they're going to trade it, we will get a portion of that as royalty. But the majority of it will go to the holders, right? So, and the more valuable the NFT, the better it is for everybody, right? It's a win-win. So we've just been thinking about, all right, what sort of events, what sort of value and activities can we do down the track that are going to bring more value to the holders and more value to the uh, NFT itself, as opposed to maybe expanding the business or expanding the business model, just expanding the value proposition and also finding a way to be able to get something in return for that. So we will get something. We will get, when people trade these NFTs, we will get, uh, some royalty, so that's that's valuable to us, obviously. Obviously, the more expensive they are, the more royalties we're going to get. So that's a win as well. So everything we do ultimately is going to give us some return, um, and and ultimately we could potentially work out ways with other restaurants globally where we can produce more value. We can give, we can we can do deals with restaurants where for our NFT holders they will give them a fifty percent discount. These kinds of things are going through our head that we can actually introduce where it may not cost us money necessarily, but if we can make it happen, it's going to be valuable to the, to the holders. Yeah, absolutely. And look, as far as you're aware, um, are you one of the first, if not the first restaurants in the world um, to sort of go through something like this to obviously launch an NFT project and then um, distribute the profits under a, a, a uh, DAO structure? Um, look, uh, it, it's very difficult to say. Uh, so let's time time our conversation. Our conversation is happening basically mid Jan 2022, right? So as as um, as uh, as we're speaking, all the searches that I've done and I've done a lot trying to find somebody else who who is doing something similar, I have not been able to find anybody. Okay. So uh, so Gary V has just recently. Um, created an NFT collection that is designed to raise money in for a restaurant that will hopefully exist a year from now. Um, and he sold $14 million worth of NFTs. And the only utility they provide is membership to the restaurant. That's it. So you can get access to that restaurant. 
Um, so that's what he did. Other than that, we have not seen any other business, not even restaurant, any other business that is bricks and mortar um, that, that is able to provide these kinds of utility or any kind of utility really through an NFT collection. And I can tell you possibly, possibly why. Well, first of all, we're fairly early in the piece. And secondly, to do this, we actually had to write our own software to be able to manage uh, the, the customers when they come in. Because as part of buying our NFT, what you're going to be able to do is you'll actually be able to do a search, a public search through the collection to see if you wanted to buy, let's say an NFT, if an NFT has used the perks that, that are given with them. Let's say, for example, uh, uh, you get one free, uh, one free special a month, right? If you're buying NFT number 405, you want to check whether they've used this month or not, because that might change your mind about the value of this NFT today as opposed to next month. So we have to create something that doesn't exist right now. So software that is, will allow you to actually check how much value does, has NFT used for every individual NFT. And on top of that, we have to create software that is going to track that in our restaurant. Okay, so and, and it's, we're basically reinventing the, the wheel because not, none of this exists, right? We can't get an off the shelf software. It just does not exist to do, to do what we want. Uh, so we have to write, write our own. So it's not just create an NFT collection, um, you know, put some metadata into it to say, this is what you get when you own it. We also have to create a whole new infrastructure to be able to process it and make sure that everybody is able to do searches as to what value has been used and what value hasn't been. Yeah, wow. You obviously made quite a big commitment, um, you know, going and hiring somebody to build out this software is obviously an expensive process and it's a lengthy and timely process as well. So you obviously committed quite a lot to, to making this quite successful. Yeah, look, we're not looking at it as, as something that, uh, well, first of all, we have no idea how many we're gonna sell, right? So but hopefully we'll sell out. And I think we will because there's been lots and lots of interest and just like yourself, Every, every, everybody that, that sees this project, they, they basically say, well, what, what, what a good idea. But it's, it's a good idea now. It will be a standard idea maybe six months from now because everybody is going to realize, hold on, this works, we should do this. Uh, but yeah, we've certainly committed tens and tens of thousands of dollars in, into this project to make sure that it works, that it gives the, the holder exactly what to say it will give them. And when is your launch date? Is it sometime in February? Yeah, so the launch date is on the 17th of Feb. Um, that's, that's when you'll be able to mint. Uh, we're inviting anybody who is interested to visit the website, which we can, we can, we can share, um, and just sign up for early access. And then those people that sign up, well, it's, it's a little bit like whitelist. They'll get uh, first opportunity to mint whatever they want to mint, and then it will go public soon after that. And you were also saying, so there's kind of different tiers to, um, to the NFT as well. So you can, you can buy in, uh, I think you were saying the minimum is roughly 150 bucks and it goes yeah, all the so way the, up to, to about 800. Sorry, yes. So there is a gold tier for 150 USD and there is a platinum tier for $800 USD. Uh, there's only two tiers. Um, and uh, as I said, so the gold tier is, we, we, we made it cheap enough that no, no matter what happens, um, you're going to get your, uh, your value of the NFT back uh, in various utility that you get from the NFT. And certainly the more expensive tier, you can get the value of NFT back within months. Yeah, wow. Very smart as well. It's, it's good to be able to cater to, you know, people from um, different, I guess, socioeconomic backgrounds. So $150 for some people might be a lot of money and to others it might not be much at all. And even same with the, you know, the $800 might be a lot to some people and not a lot to all. So that's a good way to kind of have things balanced and, and allow multiple sort of people from, like I was saying, sort of different socioeconomic backgrounds to jump on board and obviously try and take a, take a piece of your, of your restaurant pie, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, what's interesting is we, we've spoken since pricing and releasing it, we've, we've had lots of contact from various individuals who collect NFTs, represent NFT groups, et cetera. And, there seems to be one common thing that's being said is why did you price the more expensive tier so cheaply? So what do you mean? Well, you should have priced it for at least uh, at least half ETH or approximately uh, fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars USD because you're giving away so much value. I've, I've heard this now from three different individuals, and I'm saying, okay, well, 
<laughs> Sorry, we just want to make sure it works for everybody, right? So it, it's interesting that, yeah, we approached it purely, the pricing was purely based on, can we give the, the buyer enough value that it's a no-brainer? And I think we've achieved that. You also said that um, there's been quite a bit of interest um, in this as well. Has that been, you know, generated locally through, um, through the community within Melbourne or is that also, you know, on an international scale as well? Um, so it's both, but so far primarily locally because we haven't really promoted it internationally yet, just a tiny bit. Uh, so the majority of interest is local um, from, from Australia because we've done a couple of, uh, a couple of posts on our socials. Um, so the restaurant uh, has got a fairly significant social uh, following. So um, it would have uh, penetrated fairly deeply within our following plus friends, family members, et cetera, of, of, our, of our followers. So, so far, the interest has been primarily local just because only locals know about it. Yeah, beautiful. I actually found you guys on Facebook as well. I saw a, I saw a thread that it, you had quite a lot of engagement on there. I think you had, you know, over 100 comments and, and quite a few hundred likes on there, um, mm. just on Facebook. And it was interesting. There's quite a few mixed responses, you know, some people commenting that basically didn't have any idea of, what an NFT is apart from that they've probably seen five minutes worth of an article that sort of just talked about um, one utility, which is, you know, NFT art, which is quite literally just one very, very small piece of um, the NFT puzzle. And mm -hmm. then you had other people going, wow, this is a brilliant idea. Um, I can't wait for, for launch date. I'm going to follow this project. Um, so I find it quite interesting as well. Like you've mentioned before we were speaking, um, you were talking about Gary Vaynerchuk also having, some kind of, it's not the same, but it's a similar sort of project where obviously he's giving away membership to his restaurant, but not really providing much utility there on after. Mm -hmm. So it's obviously going to be quite a, a, you know, common thing to happen within the future. Do you foresee this also, you know, being in other um, industries as well? So using yeah, NFTs yeah. and stuff in other industries? Absolutely. Basically, the way, the way I see it is that membership is definitely a very, very, um, useful uh, utility because our society is getting more and more fragmented. Uh, we, we, we like to belong to groups and this is where the fragmentation is coming from. Anyway, this is my, this is my view, uh, just generalizing here. And uh, NFTs that allow for membership uh, are basically uh, further that fragmentation, right? Is it good? I don't know, but it's happening and, it's, uh, and we're moving in that direction. So uh, by owning a certain NFT and having access to certain groups, you're going to differentiate, differentiate yourself from others, right? And, and, and that is something that uh, lots and lots of people find valuable, right? So that, that's going to happen. So what Gary Vee has done is he has made an exclusive restaurant for his NFT holders. Um, is it going to work from a business model for him? I don't actually know because effectively he's only sold 1,500 of them, right? So can he run a successful restaurant out of 1,500 holders who might bring some friends with them? Is, is three or 4,000 people enough to run a successful restaurant? I actually don't think so, running our restaurant. I, I, think, I think he would need 10 to 20,000. Is he going to sell more? Possibly, right? He might sell, sell more, but um, membership model is definitely a model that's going to work and is going to probably propagate in NFTs as the next utility. So apart from art, I think the next one is going to be membership model. The other models that uh, uh, businesses like Nike and Adidas are doing is that effectively they're giving you a digital token in exchange for a physical good. So that's, that's going to be definitely a business model that's going to work. And they're effectively bypassing retailers, right? So if, you, if, you've got, uh, if you've got a Nike NFT for a particular shoe, you don't need to go to the shop to buy that shoe. You send an NFT, you basically tell Nike, this is my NFT, I'll burn it. You send me a shoe and that just, just, they just happened, right? So all the Nike retailers have just lost out. There's, there's no more middlemen. Um, but that's something that's going, that's going to happen. Uh, utility NFTs like ours are going to, going to be important, but they're for businesses that can create some sort of a community. Um, but ultimately, yeah. So they will, they will uh, take, uh, take over from various membership cards that give you this utility or that utility. You're going to, instead of having a card, you're going to have an NFT. And there's obviously a million others that we haven't really seen yet, but yeah, small, small businesses will start adopting this because it just makes sense. Yeah, I totally agree. I'm quite heavily in the play to earn gaming space 
which is also another sort of, you know, utility that um, NFTs provide. And so obviously I can kind of see um, quite far down that road where I think things are going to go. But like you've just mentioned, it's, it's going to start scaling into pretty much every industry um, and every profession, I think. And it's going to obviously open up new avenues for, you know, small businesses, medium-sized businesses and large businesses as well. Um, look, Greg, have you got any sort of closing thoughts or anything like that for the viewers? Closing thoughts. Well, the only thing I'd like to talk to the viewers is that if you're interested, the drop is on the 17th of Feb. Um, the, uh, the website is thirdwavenft.club. Um, probably they will be part of the notes, but the thirdwavenft.club, I, I would welcome anybody to drop by the site sign up for the early early drop maybe maybe join our discord telegram uh, social channels if you have any questions we, we're there we can answer we can answer all the all the questions um and you know be part of the future effectively we are we're uh, we we're all new to this but we are one of the first if not the first doing something like it absolutely look thanks so much for your time today good luck with the nft drop um i'll put all the links in the uh, comment section on this um, for YouTube as well. Uh, and obviously we'll share all of that um, through the social channels that we both have. Okay, great. And thank you for asking me really good questions. No worries. Thank you so much for your time. No worries. Thank you.